Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically the preferences editing pane. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener feature. Alrighty, so I talked about the general preferences already and now we're going to get into the editing preferences. So to get to the preferences menu, come up here to the Scrivener menu button, click on preferences and it will bring up this separate pop-up window. So general is right here and now we're on editing right here. We'll start in options. So if you're an old lady like me and you like to have your text zoomed in, you can set it to default zoom. I always set mine 125 for the default just because it's that's the size I'm used to reading at and it makes my eyes happy. The writing direction is in some languages, such as Arabic, they write from right to left rather than left to right, like we do in English. And if you are writing in a language that needs to go from right to left, this is where you change that as a default. You can also change this per paragraph by clicking on the paragraph you want to change, coming up to Format, Paragraph, and writing direction and then you choose right to left so you can see the not only is the other well, words going this way but also the punctuation went to the different side for the ruler what types of measurements do we use for the ruler so i use inches you can use these four options and in order to display the ruler in here we do command r toggle it on and off or you can go into view and then text editing and here it is here's the ruler area so I've got mine displayed but this is how I would hide it or display it toggle it on and off so I have already kind of talked about the typewriter scroll in my video about my favorite things about Scrivener so this is where you kind of toggle with that so if you want it in the middle of the editor bottom third, wherever it is more comfortable, however much white space you want on the bottom of where you're typing. Checking this means that your scrolling will always be on the scroll line. So wherever your cursor is will always be, in this case, in the middle of the editor or the bottom quarter, the bottom third, or whatever you set it for. So down here in options. So, so smart copy and paste is like when you copy and paste text and it has spaces on each side. Smart copy and paste will clean up the white space so you don't have a bunch of different uh, uh, so you don't have a bunch of, of white space on either side of the pasted word and then it will also clean up after if you cut text so there's not a bunch of spaces so there will only be one space when you cut text. Right here, typing clears search highlights. So a feature that Scrivener does when you are searching for things. So let's search for the word dialogue. All right, so these two are popping up and they are highlighted. And then as I type in here, they stay highlighted. Now, if I want that highlighting to go away, I can go back into preferences and hit that check mark. And then I've searched for dialogue, but then as I type, that highlighting will go away. Um, so yeah, if that's, if you have been searching and it's highlighted and you want it to go away that's how you turn it off <laughs> if that's something that's been bugging you so use hyphenation when we are typing okay so what I'm gonna do first so that I don't have to like type a ton I'm gonna justify I'm gonna hit this right and bring this justification over right into the middle of pontificated so it highlight or it hyphenates it automatically down to the next line but if you do not want this, and sometimes when it does this automatically, it hyphenates them in the wrong spot because um, depending on which style you're using, you need to, to hyphenate in very specific places. And also sometimes it'll hyphenate inappropriately and so you'll get like weird full words on either side of the hyphen. So if you want to turn this off, this is where you just turn that off and it goes back. So I'm going to turn it on, there it is, off, and it's like this. 
So Avoid Widows and Orphans and Page View. I haven't talked about individual views yet. Um, I have talked about these group views up here, but to do individual group, um, individual views, we go to view and text editing and show page view. So this is kind of like in Microsoft Word, the way that that is set up, right? A widow would be if this were a bigger paragraph and the, most of the paragraph was up here and then one line popped up down here. And an orphan would be if there was one line of the paragraph up here and then the rest of it down here. So if you dis or if you um, disable or you enable prevention of widows and orphans, then it will cluster the whole paragraph either up here or down here. So it will make sure that they're not split by the page. Use fine kerning. Kerning is a typography term for the like oh gosh the the space between letters or the space between characters in in like text and typed text so if you disable this then your you can see the kind of change over here so if I turn it back on it has spaced it out a little bit to make it easier to read and if I turn it off it comes together and it's not a huge difference but I would recommend using fine kerning, especially depending on the font you're using. Some fonts are more, but there's a bigger difference when you turn it off. Uh, it's default on and I recommend leaving it on. It's one of those things where if your Scrivener is running super slow, you might turn it off just to kind of help processing speed. But in general, I would recommend leaving it on. It makes it better. It's more readable when this is enabled. And live counts show. so. If I toggle words off, then my words go away. And now if I toggle pages off, my pages go away. I can turn my characters on so I can count everything. If I count, if I have nothing selected, then nothing shows up. But if nothing is selected, I can still click down here and this will still pop up. So if I don't want to have it running, but I still want to be able to see it, then that's still a possibility. All right, footnotes and comments. On here, do not color the text of an inline annotation, which kind of like with the fine kerning, this will improve your processing time, your speed for the program. But unless you're having problems, then it's probably okay. Um, do not color the text of inline annotations. So if I back here, you can see my inline annotations and footnotes and all of that. And if I check this, then those change. So right now they are reddish, and now they're just black. And terminating footnotes before punctuation. This is another style thing. Certain types of um, styles, like the Chicago Manual style or um, MLA or whatever, like these different styles for formatting books and papers and that kind of thing. Some of them say, okay, if you're gonna have footnotes, the little footnote number needs to be before punctuation. And some of them say no, it needs to be after the punctuation. So just depending on which particular style you are using, you can check this or uncheck it. But you can also just, it's wherever your mouse, like your cursor goes, will be where the thing pops up. But if you're having an issue with it, this might be a good place to come and, and try to fix that. And open comments in the inspector if possible. And that's just if the inspector is gone from over here and I want to click on this and so this pops up in a little pop-up right here but if I check this and then I click on here it will open up the inspector rather than giving me a pop-up down here disable insertion point blinking and that's just my where my cursor goes see it is not blinking because whew, this is checked to so the main editor, it doesn't blink, but if I were in composition mode, it would be blinking. Unless I click this off. So if I click this off, click in here, now it's going to blink. Click it back on, and it no longer blinks. If that's something that you're um, concerned with. And using block insertion points. So the, as we can see, my insertion point is pretty skinny right here. But if I want to change it to, change it to 8, and then I click that here and see it's thicker. And the thicker ones are generally better used with fixed width 
fonts like um, like courier is fixed with so no matter which letter you're typing it's always going to take up the same number of horizontal pixels and um, like times new roman is not fixed with so the the i is skinnier than the g or the n and the w is fatter than everything so with big thick block insertion points these are kind of better used with this fixed width text just because in the ones that aren't fixed if you have a really thick blinker then it can overlap over text or over punctuation and look kind of weird um, but it is also more visible so if you have vision problems then making this thicker can help you find that cursor more easily alrighty so now we are done with the editing options and we're going to go into editing formatting and this only applies to new things that you create. So as I'm making changes in here, nothing is going to change with the things I've already made. It will only apply to future things. So this is basically just how your new documents will be formatted. And when I talked about styles, so setting your styles, right? The, where is it? The no, no style. This is what is going to show up as your like quote, no style, I guess. So up here, um, I'm going to change the font to Optima, yeah, Optima, because you can tell that that's different than the others over here. And let's say I want it to be right justified, or sorry, I want it to be left justified. <laughs> and my size, I want it to be 12. Okay, so now I've got that set up, and I will come over here, hit a new scene, and then as I'm typing, you can see that this is Optima, this is not Helvetica, or Palatino, or whatever else. And it's all the way left justified, like I said it, and it's 12. So this is how you set up whatever your no style default is, or you can just real quick make these new styles if whatever you, you want to do, whatever is easier for you. And like I said, this only applies to new things that are made. It will not change anything, any of the old stuff. So this is still Palatino. It's not anything new. And it's going to stay Palatino. And then the notes fonts I used for document notes and the scratch pad. And um, the scratch pad was discussed in an earlier video. And I believe document notes was well. Um, but that, you know, if you're going to change the font for up here, it's probably worth it to match them all down here or not, whatever you want to do. If you have already set up, like right here, I already set up that this is like my normal kind of default that I want. So I select inside this so that this is all selected to what I want it to be. And then use formatting and current editor and hit that and see it has changed it to Times New Roman half an inch indent size 12. And now if I make a new document typing, you can see that it's Times New Roman and it's 12. And there we go, there's that. So let's move on to revisions. So revisions is just color wise. So after you have finished your entire manuscript, we come back through for the first revision. Font format, revision mode, and we'll say first revision. And now whenever I type anything, so you can see that my cursor is now red, and this has changed to red. So everything, every new thing is going to change to red. So I go through and I do all of my first revisions and then I come up here and say, okay, hey, this is now my second revision. So my second revision and on and on until I get down to the fifth revision and then I'm out of colors <laughs> um, and there you go. And also from this window, if you want to remove all your revisions, then it just, it doesn't take the text away. It just deletes all the colors out so that your, your revision text matches your base text color. If these are the things you're going to keep. So in here is where you can change your revision colors and checking whether to use revision colors in your notes. Um, if you don't want to, if you want your notes to be completely separate thing, uncheck this and you won't have colors in your notes anymore. And as always with all of the preferences, if you want to go back, if you did all these changes and you go, oh no, I messed it up and you want to go back to your defaults, just hit that and it will take you back to your defaults. And then from here, down here in manage, 
saving preferences, loading preferences, loading themes, etc. That is it for the editing preferences window. So thank you for tuning into this video and I hope you learned something new. If you liked this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.